Welcome to the first ever Mahaney Sports Podcast, where Chad and Dad talk sports. I'm Chad Mahaney, and I'm joined by my dad, CJ Mahaney. Chad, this is our first podcast, and it might be our last (laughs) podcast. Neither of us have high expectations for a large listening audience. We don't even actually have commitments from family members to listen to this broadcast. Only three of them showed up tonight. So. <laughs> That's right. We, should we, got inform- like, we got 30% of them here. <laughs> we should inform our listeners that we are recording this before a live audience of three, but it appears that only two are paying attention to us at this time. Yeah, we got people eating food. <laughs> <That's> just- <laughs> This is exactly the atmosphere this podcast should begin and continue it. So, Dad, everyone knows that you love sports. You've obviously done the Don't Waste Your Sports booklet. You've obviously done radio. But I want to know where your love for sports originated. My love for sports would have actually originated with my parents. Um, they transferred a love for sports into my life at an early age. Uh, my dad transferred a love for watching sports, and my mom transferred a love for playing sports. Uh, I would also say that my older brother had a huge influence on my life. He is a fine athlete, and though uh, it is difficult for him to admit that I am a better athlete than he (laughs) is, uh, growing up, he had a a significant influence on my life. And actually, I learned learned to some degree how to read, reading the Washington Post sports page each day. There, There was an order to read the paper. It began with my dad, uh, then my older brother, and that order must not be violated. So I was I was third. So uh, from mornings with Shirley Povich through to Tony Kornheiser, Michael Wilbon, and Thomas Boswell, that created an appetite for sports. And then finally, I, I grew up in a great neighborhood for sports. To grow up to, uh, on 203 Hodges Lane was to grow up on a street where it seemed like Uh, Every home had three to five kids who loved sports. The baseball field was one block away. Uh, If we weren't playing there, we were playing in the street. If we weren't playing in the street, we were playing in the backyard. Uh, We were playing until it was dark. Uh, We played beyond dark when we couldn't see the ball. Uh, But we were playing in that neighborhood. And then I I grew up in the Washington, D.C. area. So I grew up with a love for the Redskins and a hatred for the Dallas Cowboys. I grew up with a love for the Washington Senators and a hatred for the New York Yankees. I grew up with a love for University of Maryland basketball and a hatred for Duke basketball. And as you are aware, nothing has changed. One of my favorite memories is to go to family reunions and see you and your brother arguing about who is better at sports. So that, that brings back great memories. <laughs> yes, it's, it's actually, uh, there actually shouldn't be an argument about that. Uh, I don't think there's any question about who the better athlete is. But let me say again, he is a fine athlete. We might need to have him on the show just to we get should. the record We will. Straight. We will have Steve. Steve uh, at one point was the uh, swimming coach for the University of Maryland. And uh, we should definitely have him on this show. Absolutely. Okay, great. The audience can't see you're wearing a Washington Nationals baseball shirt. I I'm am wearing, indeed. I'm wearing a Redskins hat. You we love are. the Nationals. We love the Redskins. We love Maryland basketball, as you referred to before. Yes. So how, why do we love these teams since they have constantly disappointed us over the years? <laughs> I mean, you've dealt with it for like 40 years. I've, I've only had 18, and I'm, I'm already worn out. Oh, my son. Uh, Well, we love these teams uh, because your father has taught you what it means to be a true fan. Uh, A true fan remains loyal to his team, uh, regardless of the team's performance on the field. And it is unacceptable to just abandon your team because they stink. So, yes, for decades now, the teams we love stink. But I have sought to teach you how to be a loyal fan, which is what my dad transferred to me as well. So that is why uh, we remain loyal fans. And for those who abandon their teams, like since we've moved to Louisville, I've had a number of people ask us, ask me, uh, you know, hey, are you going to become a a Louisville Cardinal fan? Well, never, never. You don't (laughs) alter your allegiance just because you alter your geography. That that is a violation of one of the most serious and significant rules of fandom. So one can't just be a front one runner or, or a, a bandwagon fan. One must remain loyal to the team that one's father transferred an allegiance to or 
uh, where one grew up. And that's what I've taught you how to do. So I guess you're not a fan of those people that just wear Cowboys hats and Yankees hats, even though they're not really fans. Well, I think I made clear earlier that I, I hate the Yankees and I hate the Cowboys with all my heart, soul, mind and strength. And I would encourage our listeners to join me in that uh, in that opposition. Uh, so, no, uh, front runner fans uh, are, are, are to be corrected. Um, I think there should be fines, penalties, possibly jail time. But yes. here's the question. What about the Christians on those teams? What about the Christians on those teams? Oh, we, we thank can... God for the Christians on those teams. I, we, I would definitely differentiate between those on those teams that love the Savior uh, and are seeking to glorify God. And they would have nothing but my full support. But I still hate their team. <laughs> so I can support them personally and individually while opposing their team. And I would fully expect them. In other words, I know on the Dallas Cowboys, there, there are a number of players who love the Lord. And so the gospel would certainly transcend our allegiance, whether it be to the Cowboys or the Redskins. But they would fully identify with my opposition to the Cowboys as a team, and they certainly uh, oppose the Redskins, and that's the way it should be. So I would differentiate between a player who loves the Lord on a team and the team. Okay, so we got a lot of sports on this weekend, probably too much sports on this weekend. Always too yeah. much sports. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we got Thursday night football, Friday night football, Saturdays. They're just trying to take the whole week. Yep. So um, how, yep. how do we glorify God as we watch sports this weekend? Okay, well, that's a good question. And they're not trying to take the whole week, son. They, they have taken over <laughs> the whole week. Um, I was saying to someone recently that uh, – when I, when I think of sports, and in this case, when I think of watching sports, I think of the massive amount of time that the average individual devotes to watching sports. And yet, uh, particularly for the Christian, how little time has been given uh, to uh, considering how one might glorify God in watching sports. We're to do all for the glory of God, and that would include watching sports. So what does it look like to watch sports uh, for the glory of God? Now, for me uh, as a father, um, that my role as a father would inform my watching of sports. My temptation uh, as, as a father would be simply to watch sports passively or to become selfishly absorbed in sports. But I have a role and responsibility as a father to, to serve my family and growing up to serve you. So determining what we watch, determining uh, how much sports we watched, and then seeking to lead and serve you and the family by uh, creating an event when we watched sports, um, building a memory, building us together uh, relationally, and and when appropriate, seizing it as a teaching moment as well. Not, not a formal teaching moment where I'm standing before the family and instructing them, but trying to impart discernment so that uh, as we are watching a game and listening to announcers just incessantly draw attention to skill, and there can be uh, legitimate attention drawn to skill, I wanted to draw attention to displays of character. Uh, we would be consistently listening to announcers reference greatness in relation to skill. Well, I would want to bring a, a biblical definition of greatness as humility and servanthood into the conversation. I wanted to do all I could to teach discernment to you because I wanted you, Chad, to be a discerning fan and not a dope like <laughs> your dad. <laughs> was, by the <laughs> grace of God, no longer a dope, I trust. Well, Dad, apart from your example, I would be a dope. And this is exactly uh, why I want to do that <laughs> podcast with you, is so that we can prevent other people from becoming future dopes. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you're right, son. Uh, uh, apart from I having the privilege to serve you, you would be a dope. And it, it, it's a worthy cause to do this podcast, to do all we can to save dopes, to save those Saving who are dopes. dopes. Yep. Welcome to the Mahaney Sports Podcast, where Chad and Dad talk sports. I'm Chad Mahaney, and I'm joined by my dad, CJ Mahaney. Okay, today the entire podcast will be devoted to the NCAA basketball tournament. Good. March Madness. Yes, Chad. As it, as it should be. This, this is my favorite time of the year, as you know, as a sports fan. This tournament delivers each year like no other sporting event. There will be upsets. There will be buzzer beaters. There will be heartbreak. There will be celebration. Uh, 
I actually think that beginning today, I, if I ran for president, Chad, I would run on the platform of declaring today a national holiday <laughs> and actually declaring each day the tournament is played a national holiday so the entire country can be undistracted in their uh, devotion to and giving attention to this tournament. I think you should just give everyone the whole week off. Sure. Because there's a lot to do this week. You there to, is a lot to do. The selection <laughs> Sunday, you got to fill out your bracket. It's a busy week. Then, then you got to watch the game. <laughs> That's, so, right. That's right. I don't know if there's time for work That's, in there. There's so, not. This, this, this is the least productive week and season for the American workforce. So these days should be declared national holidays so that we can all give our undivided attention to this tournament. And I, I want to encourage everybody to participate, all our listeners to participate. This really is, uh, I, I believe, this sporting event, uh, filling out one's brackets, participating with others, uh, I, think it is, it's a, I think it's a gift from God. I think it's a means of uh, when seized an opportunity to cultivate friendships, to build memories among family and friends and at the workplace. So I, I want to encourage everybody to participate regardless of how knowledgeable you consider yourself to be or uh, how <laughs> or if you lack knowledge because that's really not important in relation to the brackets. I also think, Chad, this is an opportunity every year to grow in humility as you go public with your picks, which no doubt will prove to be yeah, this, inaccurate. This is our first year going public with our picks. Last year... Broadly public. Yeah, yes, that's last true. Last year in our yes. family bracket, yes. my two-year-old niece <laughs> beat 